remotely. Uh, my name is Andy Frisky. I work at, uh, at Dream Bank here. And, and for those of you who are tuning in that aren't familiar with what Dream Bank, I just want to give you a little bit of context before we get started. Dream Bank is centered in Madison, Wisconsin, and we are uh, a part of American Family Insurance. And everything we do uh, revolves around inspiring people to pursue their dreams. In a large part, we do that through the programs that we offer. So when we're not quarantined in our house, we typically um, have around 40 free events a month that are uh, organized into 11 different buckets. Anything ranging from small business and entrepreneurial workshops uh, to fitness related events. We have career related uh, event series as well, too. Um, and that's just to name a few. If you look at this ticker right on the bottom, mm -hmm. oh, right, right on the bottom there, you can go there and check out. Yeah, yeah, you can check out some of our upcoming events um, that we will be live streaming during the quarantine. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and dive into uh, our featured presenter tonight, Leah Rowe, and she's going to be discussing on how to work uh, or how to thrive as a remote employee. So Leah Rowe, uh, CPA, co-founder of The Perk, mm -hmm. is a business coach, company cons uh, culture consultant, and remote work guru. As a coach, she celebrates people for who they are and who they want to be, while also holding their feet to the fire to take action and achieve incredible results. As a culture consultant, she inspires companies to cultivate impactful, positive changes to their work, their cultures through authentic, community-focused leadership. And the bottom line is, Leah will help you live better, business better, and perk you up in the process. Leah is also the founder of Culture Community, a Madison-based group for people who are passionate about being great leaders and intentionally building great cultures. They host free monthly events to help their community connect, learn, grow, develop, and take action to make positive change in their organizations. Leah's passions and total obsession for people and culture development work has earned her the affectionate nickname, the Culture Queen of Madison. If you're ready to innovate, take your culture to the next level and have some fun while doing it, Leah is who you need to work with. Again, tonight she is going to be speaking on how you might be able to thrive as a remote employee. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over <laughs> to Leah Rowe. Yay, thank you. That was a mouthful, Andy. So thank you for giving such an amazing um, introduction of me. And I think my slides are shared if people can see them. Hey, there they are. Hello. <laughs> Ooh, and I bounced around too. That's fun. Okay. So hello everyone. I'm Leah Rowe. I'm going to be talking to you today about how to thrive as a remote employee during this coronavirus pandemic. So let's jump in and get started. Let me make sure my slides advance. There we go. About me and today, you've just heard a bunch about me from Andy, so I won't go into too much detail, but as he said, I'm a CPA, I'm a life and business coach, I'm an organizational culture consultant, and I am a remote work expert. So my background is in building, developing, and scaling remote teams and cultures. So you could say remote work is my jam. So excited to be here to talk about that today. I'm gonna talk for approximately 30 minutes, hopefully less than that, but sometimes I go a little bit over. And please feel free to ask questions throughout in the chat and we will answer as we can. And I will also answer questions at the end. So yay, let's get started. Okay, so why are we here? I always love to start with why. Why are we here? We are here together today <laughs> virtually because this is not a normal work from home situation. Many people right now are finding themselves working remotely for the very first time. Many people are remote only for the first time. So even if you worked remotely from home in the past, you know, work from home Fridays, now you're finding yourselves completely, completely remotely working. And this is not a normal work from home situation because it was completely abrupt. For a lot of companies, there was no time to plan or strategize. And when I work with organizations to become remote or remote first or remote friendly, it's a whole process. It is a change management plan. It takes time. It takes communication with employees. It takes trial and error. We didn't have that. A lot of companies had to abruptly move to remote work. And so not totally normal. Also, there's a lot more distractions right now than in normal work from home situations. For example, schools are closed and kids are at home. We will touch on that briefly um, later on in the presentation. So basically, friends, this is an unprecedented time. We need to make some shifts in how we think and how we behave in order to really thrive as remote employees during this pandemic. So I wanna go through some tips. <coughs> Excuse me. 
first, the very first thing, if you get nothing else out of this presentation today, I want you to learn this phrase. I want you to know this phrase. I want you to love this phrase. I want you to tell it to yourself, tell it to your partner, tell it to your friends, tell it to your coworkers. This is an unprecedented time. I'm doing a great job. We just talked about all these reasons of why this isn't a normal work from home situation. And because of all that, if you're like me, you find yourself at multiple times during the day feeling like a failure, feel like you're failing at work. You feel like you're failing as a parent. You feel like you're just not doing a great job, but we are in a totally unprecedented time. We need to shift that mindset. So anytime you feel like I'm a failure or you see someone else on your team who feels like they're failing, remind them, remind yourself, this is an unprecedented time. You are doing a great job. So if that's all you take from today, I'm happy with that. But I do have some other tips. <laughs> so let's jump into those. Okay, let's start with remote best practices. First, I want you to determine what work is priority and can be done remotely. It is very possible that you have work that cannot be done remotely right now, and that's okay. I want you to have a discussion with your team, with your managers, and figure out, based on your goals, what is priority to accomplish over the next week? We are definitely going to be remote for at least four more weeks until the end of April, at least. But it can be hard to think in long term like that right now, so really take it down into a week chunk. Based on the goals, your personal goals, based on the company goals, what is priority to accomplish over the next week? And what do you need to be able to accomplish those goals remotely? And I want you to remember that you do not have to have all the answers. It's really hard with everything going on right now and abruptly becoming remote to know exactly what you need to do. So do not, you do not have to have all the answers. Discuss it with your team, discuss it with your managers and figure out based on the priorities of the company, what can you do over the next week? How can you do it remotely and what do you need in order to do it successfully? So first thing you need to do, determine what work is actually priority and can be done remotely. The second thing is to set up your workspace. Try and have a dedicated workspace if possible. I know that that's not possible for everyone, but if possible, try to have a dedicated space so that you can separate work from home because our work and our home are so physically connected right now, literally that it's really important to try and have something where you can leave one room and go to your home life and come back into the room and have your work life. Also, a good rule of thumb in setting up your workspace, because you're probably gonna be on video a ton right now, is try not to give people a reason to be distracted. That's a really nice way of saying, you probably shouldn't be on video calls from your bed. <laughs> Don't give people a reason to be super distracted by what's going on behind you. And again, that can be really hard right now with kids at home, and we'll touch on that briefly. But try to have a dedicated space. Don't give people a reason to be too distracted. Here's an example of our workspaces in our house. So um, on one side, you can see our war room. Dan and I have our desks next to each other. But because we're both working um, from home at the exact same time now, we have to be separated so that we can take calls and whatnot. So another place that we set up is in the dining room. So we have a dedicated space and also a non-dedicated space. Okay, next remote best practice is to use video like Zoom, or I know a lot of people use Microsoft Teams as well. The reason why you should be using video is because human connection is absolutely crucial when you're working remotely. It is even more crucial right now in this socially distant world that we're living in. Social connection is so important for your emotional well-being and your productivity, so make sure that you are using video. And when you think about it, don't think, oh, I need to like plan a presentation or something to get on video. Any conversation that you would have had in person or on the phone, you can do on video. I know tons of people who are starting to also randomly video call each other on Zoom or on Slack because they used to just pop into each other's offices and say hi or ask a random question. And people were really missing out on that randomness, that spontaneity. So a ton of people now are using, are still doing that, but they're just spontaneously video chatting each other, which I totally love. So make sure you're getting on video daily for your own productivity and your emotional wellness. This is so important for you and everyone else on your team. Okay. 
The final remote best practice in this section of the presentation is to record and send video messages. So in addition to being live on video, you re I really urge you to record videos and send them to your teammates. This is really important for asynchronous communication, which is a big deal right now. Continuous communication is important for remote teams who are not all working on the same schedule. And because of everything that's going on, I'm sure you've noticed for yourself or your coworkers, some schedules have shifted. So you can record yourself on video. Um, I do this when, for example, my employee Steph will work on something, she'll send it over to me and I'll review it later at night when I can get to it. And I will record a video of myself reviewing it and saying, I really like what you did here. I would add a comma here. I would think about this over here, but it's a great way to keep work moving. And also, a bonus is if you respond to emails with a video. This is something I started doing years ago, just being a remote employee. I missed seeing people's faces, and so I just thought, huh, maybe they missed seeing my face. So I started responding to emails with a video message, and I actually found that it's way more effective, and it's also um, way more efficient. I can do a video in 30 seconds where it'll take me, you know, 10 minutes to write the email. So. I really encourage you with your teammates, with your clients, everyone is craving this social connection right now. So respond to your emails with a recorded video. I promise you people will love it. Okay, so how to thrive as a remote employee during the coronavirus pandemic. Next thing I wanna talk about is we need to shift our expectations. You may be less productive right now. You may be less productive just in the beginning or you may be less productive until things get back to normal. Why? The reason is, there are several reasons, but for many people, they're remote for the first time. If you're remote for the first time, it's a steep learning curve. You have to figure out the tools. You have to figure out where you're gonna work in the house. You have to figure out what schedule works for you. You have to figure out when are we meeting? Are we meeting via video? How does this work? It's a steep learning curve. Also, many people are remote only for the first time. So even if you've worked remotely here and there, being completely remote is a totally different ball game. And so it, it, it also has a steep learning curve. The world doesn't make a ton of sense right now. So there's a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry. There's a lot of things that are going on in our head. We're worried about our family, our friends, um, our future travel plans that are now canceled. All of those things are going on. So there's a lot stealing our focus that are causing us to not, it's causing us to not be able to focus on the actual work and to be as productive as we usually are. Also, the big one <laughs> for those out there like me, our kids are at home with us. It's totally insane. It's causing us to not be as productive as we usually are. So let's talk about kids for just a second. Under normal circumstances, this would never be advisable. When I work with organizations to become remote, we talk about this in the hiring process. We say, being a remote company, it is not like because you can work from home, that is not a substitute for childcare. You still need childcare. Your kids cannot be around for you to be able to work. But right now, there is no choice. Schools are closed. This is very much my reality. Betty, my 21 month old, I have to keep remembering she's 21 months now. She's with me almost all the time. So this is very much my reality. And so even for those of us who are super remote savvy, I've been a remote employee and part of remote companies for years. We're very challenged by this. It is throwing a huge wrench into things. So some quick tips, if you are working with kids, a way to thrive as a remote employee right now is the thing that I found to work the best for me is do not try to work and parent at the same time. It does not work. I always say I never feel guilty for being a working mom, but I feel loads of guilt when I'm trying to work and be a mom at the same time, and I'm not able to do well at either one. So don't try to work and parent at the same time. Structure it so you can have work time and then um, parenting time. Be realistic about what you can and can't do. <laughs> there is a limit. <laughs> no one is meant to be a full-time parent and a full-time employee at the exact same time. So you need to be really realistic about what you can and can't do, and you need to be gentle with yourself. Take everything day by day. Try a schedule. If it doesn't work, communicate with your team and change it. Also, do not feel bad if you have to say from time to time, I'm so sorry, I need to go tend to something. That happens often when I'm on Zoom calls and I can hear screaming from the other room. So 
do not feel bad saying that so many, everyone is in the same boat right now. We're all dealing with our own different challenges. So do not worry. People are very, very compassionate to those working at home with kids right now. So if you're working at home with kids or if your teammates are, just embrace the fact that kids are gonna be pulling sleeves, screaming on conference calls and showing up on video calls. One thing I will say, if you are at your company, if you have kids, be a leader and lead by example. Have your kids show up on video calls, be open and honest about your struggles, be the one to talk about it because there's a lot of people that are struggling that aren't going to be the first ones to come forward. So if you do have kids, be the one to talk about it. Be the one to make it normal to discuss the challenges that you're having and what's working for you. I encourage loads of com com communication, tons and tons of communication with your team. And make sure you're asking yourself and your teammates, given the priorities, what will you be able to get done today to feel accomplished and sane? This is such an important question because we really need to be balancing our productivity with our emotional wellness. So what can you do today to feel accomplished and sane, given that your kids are everywhere? <laughs> so we need to shift our expectations right now. You may be less productive. Also, work and meeting schedules will need to shift. Again, you do not have to have all the answers. This is something you need to discuss with your team. Try something that'll work for you. If it doesn't work, communicate that, course correct it, and try something different. Make sure you're practicing flexibility with yourself and with your team. What we're going through right now is totally unprecedented. We don't have a playbook. We don't have a blueprint. We're all just navigating it together. So don't feel like you need to know all the answers and don't feel like you're failing if you try something and it doesn't work. Just continue to communicate and course correct until you find something that works for you and for your team. And also don't set yourself up for failure and don't set your team up for failure. If you, you cannot expect things to be business as usual. If you expect yourself to be just as productive as before, work the exact same hours, expect your team to be just as productive or work the exact same hours, that is not going to happen. Ultimately, you will fail, your team will fail, you'll feel like a failure, and that really affects your mental health right now. It affects your mental health always if you feel like a failure, but your mental health, your emotional wellness is so important right now with everything that's going on. So please, please, please do not set yourself up for failure. Okay, next tip for how to thrive as a remote employee during this pandemic is I want you to do impact only work. Why? Because we just talked about how you might be less productive right now. So if you're less productive, if you're having less hours to work, for example, then you need to be really intentional on what work you're doing. And you need to do work, only do work that moves the needle at your organization. So my challenge to you is, I want you to shift your perspective. Instead of thinking, oh, this time really, this really sucks right now. I can't get anything done. I don't feel like I'm achieving anything. I want you to shift that perspective and choose to see this time as an opportunity. Choose to see this time as an opportunity to, to discover what actually moves the needle at your organization. What work actually needs to be done to move your business forward? Because I can guarantee you there is tons of work done at your company that is just busy work, that doesn't actually move the needle. Maybe you do a lot of stuff that you've just always done it. You've always run that report. You've always done that task. But it doesn't actually move the needle. It doesn't actually provide a ton of impact. So really choose to see this time as an opportunity to figure out what is that impact driving work and what are those things that you've been doing that maybe you don't need to do anymore. Don't need to waste your time. A great way to do this is to, on a daily basis, ask yourself the one thing. If I could only get one thing done today to move the business forward, what would that be? This question is awesome because it helps you focus and prioritize on what you actually need to do. Okay, so that's do impact only work. The next tip is I want you to focus on team connection. Social connection is so crucial for remote teams and it's so crucial, especially right now in this socially distant world that we're living in. Social connection is important for your productivity, for your ability to focus, for your emotional wellness, and for you to know that you're not alone. Feelings of belonging, 
feelings of being connected, those are the things that you need as a remote employee. We need as humans. And there are tons of ways to connect as a remote team, tons of amazing, fun, awesome ways and this is like one of the things that I love to geek out about is to get really innovative and creative in how remote teams can connect. But since we don't have all the time in the world and things have happened abruptly, I want to talk about the best way that I recommend you connect with your team right now. And the best way to do that is in daily meetings. I know everyone's probably like, Ugh, not more meetings, but these are short and these are fun. So I recommend you have three touch points with your team every day. You start the day with a 15 minute stand up in the morning. You have a 30 minute, what I call perk up around noon or early afternoon, and then a 15 minute stand down in the evening. Here's an example on Zoom of a morning stand up. So for example, my team meets every day at 9 a.m. for 15 minutes. And this is a really great way to start the day together, to get focused, to get prioritized on what we're going to be working on. It's a great time to say good morning. It's also a good time to ask each other the one thing question. All right, team, if we can only get one thing done today to move the business forward, what would that be? What's everyone working on? Then the perk up we do at noon, and this is like lunch in the break room. It's informally connection. It's a time to informally connect, socialize, re-energize. It's just another touch point. So you need to remember too, everyone's in a different situation. So maybe you're working from home completely alone and you don't see people all day. It's really nice to have those three touch points throughout the day to connect with other people. So then to put the other bookend at the end of the day, then a 15 minute stand down. This is my team. This is our stand down. It usually involves a glass of virtual wine, <laughs> but we meet at 5 p.m. every day for just a wrap up. We ask, what did you do today? What are you celebrating? What are you challenged by? But it's a really good time to end the day. And because work schedules are shifted a little bit, this doesn't mean that everyone's done working now. For example, we met at five. I'm going to be working this evening because my schedule is shifted now that I have my daughter at home with me. Um, but it's a really good time to kind of end the day together as a team and to get prepared for the next day. So this would be the daily connection schedule that I recommend right now. 9 a.m. stand up. And then everyone goes and does their own work or have one-on-ones or small group meetings, then a noon perk up. Um, when I roll this out with organizations in a normal remote world, um, usually the perk up is not mandatory, but because of how the world is right now and because everyone's become remote so abruptly, I would err on the side of having it be mandatory for right now, um, but you can change that as things progress. And then a stand down at 5 p.m. And so again, try it. This is what I recommend you try and do it for a week, do it for two weeks and let it evolve over time to what's best for your team. I know teams started using this and then they decided, you know what, we actually don't need the noon one because we have a really good 15 minute stand up and our stand down we end up doing for 30 minutes and it's totally, it's informal and social and it's great. So try it, then evolve, let it evolve to what works best for you and your team. Some other fun ways just real quick, I, I have to touch on fun ways to stay connected as a remote team. Um, one of the things I want you to do is I want you to take a perspective shift. I hear a lot of companies saying, oh, we used to you know, have all these amazing happy hours and events we would do and all these things, but we can't do it now because we're not together in person. So I want you to, I want you to shift that perspective. I want you to look at what your company did in the office. And I want you to ask yourself, what if it's still possible? Think about those things and how can you get creative and do it online? So I've seen tons of virtual happy hours, which is fantastic. That's a great way to connect with your team. A lot of people are doing themes. I know a lot of people did stuff for St. Patrick's Day. I saw a lot of stuff for April Fool's Day today. Very cool. Also, some other things that you can do that I've done with um, at companies I've worked at in the past when we were remote was uh, we had a Spotify playlist that we all collaborated on because we had tons of people who loved music at our company. So that was a really fun way to connect with each other while we were remote. Also, you can have remote book groups. Honestly, think about the things you were doing physically together in the office and think, what if it's still possible? How can we get creative? How can we be innovative and still do that virtually? I wanna to touch on one-on-ones really quick. 
to thrive right now as a remote employee, it's extremely important that you keep some of the structure and normalcy that you had before all this happened. And I know I had heard from companies that one on managers were canceling their weekly one on ones just because there was so much going on and they wanted to give employees time to adjust. But then I was talking to the employees and the employees were it was really neg negatively affecting them because they needed that touch point. They needed that structure and that normalcy of checking in with their manager and like talking about work and talking about what was going on in life. So one-on-ones to thrive right now, keep doing them. If you're not doing them, start doing them. Do not cancel them. And I want to give you some questions that will be helpful right now to ask regarding work, remote work, and emotional wellness. These are three areas that I want you to hit. Whether you manage a team or you have a manager, make sure that you are talking about these three areas together. So some work questions that you can ask in your one-on-ones. What are you working on today? What challenges are you facing? What support do you need to overcome those challenges? What are you excited about working on today? These are like normal work questions that you would ask in one-on-ones. But I also want you to talk about remote work since for a lot of people, this remote work is new. What's it like working remotely? What is something you like about it? What challenges are you facing? What one thing would make the remote work situation better for you? I really like that question because it's not saying, you know, I can fix the problem, but it's saying, you know, what, and it's narrowing it down to one thing, what one thing would make the remote work, safe, work situation better for you? And then if you're the manager, you can help brainstorm how you can make that happen. Then I also really want you to touch on emotional wellness. Again, with everything going on, it is so important that we're balancing our productivity and our emotional well-being. The question, how are you, can go a long way. So you don't need to have a bunch of like crazy in-depth personal questions. How are you? Goes a super long way. How's your family? What do you need to feel whole, to feel calm? How you want to feel right now? And a really good question is what are you worried about? I think we're so concerned in the business world that asking that question to our employees or to our coworkers will open a can of worms of some sort, but that's just not the case. I asked um, Steph, my employee, what are you worried about in her one-on-one -on -one a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago? And I later asked her, I was like, you know, how was that for you? How was our one-on-one -on -one today? And she said it was so fantastic because nobody had asked that. And she had had all this stuff on her mind and being able to just say it out loud opened up so much brain space for her that she was then able to focus on things that she actually wanted to be focusing on and not have her brain just kind of all over the place with all these worries. So do not be afraid to ask your coworkers or your boss or your employees, what are you worried about? All right, and my last tip for how to thrive as a remote employee during the coronavirus pandemic is communicate, communicate, and when you feel like you're done, communicate. Discuss with your team the best ways to communicate right now. Again, things are different. So communication, the way you communicate may have to shift as well. I suggest you do daily video meetings. Again, at least a stand up, a perk up, and a stand down. Have those daily video meetings. I recommend you do video recordings for asynchronous communication. So record yourself reviewing things, record yourself responding to emails, but send video as much as possible. And make sure you are continuously communicating what's working and what needs to be changed. Again, we are in uncharted territory. Nobody has a playbook for this. And so we are figuring it out as we go. So make sure you're continuing to communicate with each other. This is really working, let's keep doing this or I thought this would work, it's not working, can we change it in this way? And make sure you're brainstorming changes together. Again, you do not have to have all the answers and you shouldn't expect your boss to have all the answers. Brainstorm changes together. Okay, this is where I pump you up. <laughs> Honestly though, there are going to be some bumps in the road. I'm sure you've already encountered your fair share of bumps, but know that you can do this. You are smart, you are creative, you are capable, and most of you have a team who is also smart, creative, and capable and can be there to support you. And if you don't have a team, if you are a solopreneur, reach out to me. I will be your team. I will be happy to help you. But this is really a time that we as humans, as individuals, as employees, as coworkers, we really need to be 
compassionate with each other. Every We are so connected right now by the fact that all of us have had changes in our life. All of us have new challenges that we are navigating. So we need to be compassionate with each other. We need to assume positive intent and we need to trust, trust, trust each other. It's really important that you at your company, that you live your company values and you care for each other. Remember, there is no blueprint for this, none, but we will navigate it together as a community, as a company, as a team. Again, if you're a solopreneur, I'll be your team. So reach out to me. And remember, this is a totally unprecedented time. You are doing a great job. You are all amazing. And if you want more, if you need help, or if you just want to hang out with me, please reach out. My email is leah at choosethepark.com. I also am doing um, amazing videos. They're high impact, low production um, <laughs> and other free webinars on remote work. And you can check that out at www.choosethepark.com. If you are working from home with kids, please join my Facebook group for some tips, tricks, and also just some funny pictures at work and kids and social distance. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Andy at the Dream Bank to see if there's any questions or comments or concerns. And also, Andy, just to thank you and to thank the Dream Bank team for continuing to build community virtually. Yeah, no, Leah, thank you so much for putting this together. And I, I very much appreciate those kind, kind words. Um, and just to kind of share Leah's sentiment at this time, I want to turn it over to any sort of questions. We'll give it some time um, for folks to come in. But um, I, I don't mean this to be a cop up, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious, Leah. Yeah. What do you think is was the the easiest thing, or one of the easiest things for you to adapt um, when you started working remotely? I know you've been doing this for a little bit now. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, what was maybe some of the more difficult things, child aside? Yeah, that, totally. Uh, you have found um, working remotely. So I think the most challenging thing, child aside, like when I became a remote worker many, many years ago, the most difficult thing for me was knowing when I shut off work. Because before, when I left the office, work was done. Mm -hmm. And when I went back to the office, work began. But now I had my laptop and like, so work was always there. So it's like, should I always be working? And so that was really hard. Um, and I had to, the way that I handled that was <laughs> took, it takes time, but you have to establish boundaries and you have to really stick to them. And so that's why, you know, when I talk about um, thinking about your workspace right now, it's important for me that I have my office or my, like where my computer is and out in my house because I need to be able to physically walk away from work. Um, so that was something that was really challenging for me. Okay. I don't know if you found that from now working from your house as well. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that, that's, that's a great point. Cause um, I guess for those of you who aren't again, familiar with the, 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 the dream bank space. Um, yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, we're, we're, we're um, you know, pr present six days a week in the mm -hmm. space and where we're, we're, we're ready for anybody who comes in and uh, yeah. going from that sort of environment to now you're, you're working from home. Um, not going to lie. It took a couple of days to really kind of settle in and, and really kind of uh, get a routine going. And I think that's what I was, I was looking for um, at, at least what was difficult for me looking for some sort of uh, routine or developing a routine uh, early on. Um, and as the days went on, it, it, it was, um, it, it, it came naturally. What, what, um, go, going back to the Leah, what, what, yeah. what, what do you think was, uh, um, really easy for you, um, from working, maybe not so much in a traditional environment, but just working from home? What was a good, what was an easy adaptation? You're like, huh, this is, this is, this is what I was looking for. This is, this is, this is right. Well, first of all, like I, I very much value freedom mm -hmm. and I started working remotely when I was in my early twenties and or mid twenties and I really value travel. And so being able to travel and work and not have to take PTO was like the most insanely amazing thing. And also like, it wasn't hard for me to stay focused and get stuff done. And I really think that's like, I've just always been very, I was really good at school. Like I've always been very studious. I've been very good at like keeping myself to like, this is what I'm going to get done today and I'd get it done. So that came 
a lot easier for me of being able to like prioritize and get stuff done. Like even regardless of where I was located. Sure. Sure. No, that's uh yeah. I mean, thinking about my, my, uh, uh, short term working from home situation. Um, I, yeah, I, I find myself with, uh, uh, you know, a limited amount of distractions and it's, it's really, it has been, uh, a little bit easier to, to crank out, uh, some of those more intricate emails, what have you, but, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we gave it uh, a, a little bit of time here. It doesn't look like we have any comments. I want to thank you, Leah, for uh, taking yeah. the time today to put together this presentation and and uh, share it with us here at DreamBake. Uh, I just want to reiterate, this is the second of four uh, installments from Working From Home with uh, with uh, Leah Rowe here too. So be sure to turn yeah. in, tune into um, DreamBank's uh, page next week, this exact same time, 7.30 Wednesday. Uh, we look forward to it. But with that, we'll go ahead and sign off. And uh, again, thank you, Leah, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yay, thanks.